Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part 11 of my house in Fata Morgana Let's Play. The last episode was pretty dang heavy, um, so we learned the truth of why Giselle ended up sent away to the mansion, and as much as I didn't want to be, uh, I was pretty dead on with my theory about why she was cast away, and uh, it was because she was abused in many ways by Michelle's father, was found out by his mother, who wanted her put to death, but the father managed to have her sent away instead. And uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it was really rough, and uh, Michelle and her got into an argument because he assumes that she... Uh, you know, had a consensual relationship with the father and thinks that she's some sort of spy or something. So she ran away from the mansion, uh, almost died, was taken in by seemingly a nice man in a nearby village, but of course things cannot be good for Giselle for long. Uh, after she was taken in by the village and things seemed peaceful, eventually tensions rose, uh, people are at each other's throats, uh, things start disappearing, and because she is the convenient outsider, they pin the blame on her, and we're willing to basically have her be property of the village uh, to do what they want with her. But she said that uh, she can lead them somewhere where they can get things to pay off their debts, which is Michelle's mansion. Uh, so she basically led them up there, basically, I guess, to kill him and take their stuff, but Michelle emerged saying he is the witch of the mansion and will put a curse on them. They ran away, and this is where everything comes out, and uh, it seems like they're gonna, like, have a conversation and hopefully get things out into the open, and maybe this is where things will start taking a better turn for their relationship. So I've talked long enough. I'm very interested to see uh, what's gonna happen after the aftermath of, like, Giselle's confession and everything. So let's get back into this and let's see what happens next. Giselle didn't recover for some time after I managed to get her inside. Unsure what else I could do for her, I had her sit before the fireplace and waited in silence as she sobbed. I had no idea what one was supposed to, stay, to say to someone who was crying. Was it normal to offer them a warm drink? I didn't know. Yeah, I... I he really hasn't had much experience with uh, social situations, so it's like, for people who are around others, it can be difficult to know what to do when someone's crying. I did know I needed to reflect on the things she had said outside and try to make sense of them, and from there, calm myself down and prepare for the conversation we were to have, as unpleasant as I was sure it would be. A considerable amount of time later, Giselle's sobbing drew to a stop, and a prep an oppressive silence stepping in to take its place. For far longer than it was comfortable, the only sound we heard was the gentle crackling of the fire. I had to say something. I knew that, but what I didn't know was how to begin. I knew nothing about having an honest, face-to-face -face discussion with someone about the things we were thinking and feeling. But that didn't change anything. I had to do it. Even if down that road lay truths, I'd be happier not seeing. Giselle, could you please tell me what you did at, no, what was done to you at my family's home? How you ended up coming to this mansion and what happened after you left? I would like to know everything from start to finish. Will you believe what I tell you? You never so much as gave me the time of day before. I... and I very much doubt you will find what I have to say agreeable. Will you still believe me, even then? Believe my word, a stranger's word, over your family or the people of the village? I cannot yet say. I must hear what you have to say to make that decision. Well, at least he's being honest. I suppose that might be better than you saying you'll believe me unconditionally exactly. He's being truthful with her. All right, I'll tell you everything. Just know that nothing I say is a lie. Understood. It's funny, now it's it's been flipped in the present time where he was the one telling her that, like, she has to remember everything and confront the tough truths, whereas before it was like, here, it's her telling him, like, I'm about to tell you a whole bunch of stuff, and you're not gonna like it. 
Giselle methodically recounted her tale for me. She told me of how she accepted an offer from the Bollingers to work as an Abigail to earn money for her family. Of how my father, Antonin, had other plans for her. Of the things he did to her. She spoke dryly, simply putting words to each event, one after the other. I had already seen how she felt deep down, though. Had heard her pained screams, which were undoubtedly genuine. I didn't think she was trying to deceive me. That was the sound of old wounds being torn open, and even I could see that. Or, perhaps my own experiences what were what allowed me to see it. Alright, let's get into Michelle's history with his family, too. Regardless, I had realized, too late, I should have seen it sooner. She described it all mechanically, to remain detached from what had happened to her, to protect herself. Of that, I had no doubts. Still, the things she told me were almost unbearable, and I had a difficult time accepting them. What was I supposed to do when I learned my father was a rapist? How was I supposed to react to that revelation? What was I supposed to think about the fact his blood flowed through me? I repulsed myself. Do you want all the details? What do you mean? Of the wounds he gave me. I still have scars from the things he did. Oh, I wonder if she's gonna show, cause he... What did he scratch, like, harlot or something onto her? Tramp? Not tramp, I don't think tramp is a word from the Middle Ages. Harlot or something to that effect. If you don't believe me, I can show them to you. No, that won't be necessary. I see. That's a relief. I don't think I could have handled that right now. I hadn't turned down her offer for her sake. I only did so because I didn't think I could take any more. I averted my eyes to protect myself. Why had I taken my mother's word, brushing aside everything Giselle had said and done? I knew good and well my mother was no longer in her right mind. Yeah, there was some weird stuff going on with the mom in the last episode. So why had I thought her letter the truth? Why had I been un unable to think rationally? There were, I believe, several factors. My childhood, my past, the witch's whispers, and above all, my own character, consumed with distrust for everything. I had to face it now, to open my eyes once more, to look at everything I had pretended away until now. I was not completely blameless for her suffering after all. Please continue, if you will. I left off at the point where the mistress discovered what was happening, I believe. I was sent to this mansion to atone for my sins. Sins that she didn't even commit. It was decided I would be sent here rather than being executed, which is what the mistress wanted. At first, I assumed it would be essentially a private prison. But in the carriage on the way here, I was given a letter. A letter? From whom? It didn't say, but your father was the one who ordered me here, so I guess it was him. The letter was very concise, simply explaining that there was someone already there. The Bollinger's youngest child. It didn't go into any more detail than that. But it did ask me to look after you. Do you still have the letter? I don't. The coachman took it back after I was finished. Thinking back on it now, that was rather strange of him to do. It was just a harmless letter. It was anything but. What? Ah, uh, it wasn't my father who wrote that letter. He believes me to be dead, so he would have sincerely thought he was banishing you to an empty house in a remote forest. Oh shit, so the mom sent him away without the dad knowing? The writer couldn't risk leaving anything that might suggest I was still alive. Then who? Oh, my brother, I believe. Either, uh, Didier or George. Georges? Georgies? But I would guess... Oh, I apologize. I'm probably butchering these these names. Uh, Didier? Your brother. Why would he? I do not know. I can't imagine why he would write such a letter. Or why he would want to tell you about me. I don't believe he had any ill intentions, at least. I mean, he asked me to look after you. That makes it sound like he's concerned about you. Then why doesn't he stay in contact? Which means the brother must have also uh, hired this guy to uh, keep an eye on Michelle. 
uh, the one who's in the forest. Why does he never respond to my letters? It's a bit late to suddenly start being concerned. Oh, that's interesting, because didn't he send a, a, a letter to his mother asking, like, about Giselle? But if the father thinks that he's dead, if he got a hold of that letter, what would happen to Michelle? Would the father kill him? No, never mind that now. Please tell me the rest. All right. Giselle resumed her story from the day she fled the mansion, terrified by my behavior. She seemed to be putting a bit more emotion in her tone of voice. Perhaps because she could see I was more interested in this part. There was a deep sadness on her face as she described that night in the rain, listening to the thunder when she gave up on living, and I knew I had caused it. She then told me of the time she spent in the nearby village. How at first, life had seemed wonderful, but in time, it had come crumbling down. Naturally, she wouldn't be here to tell me this if nothing had happened there. Once she was through with her tale, Giselle let out a long, heavy sigh, as though she had been holding it in for some time. I thought I could hear just a faint trembling in the air she exhaled. That is everything. Do you believe me? I... If... If you don't... If you still think I'm deceiving you, then I won't argue with you. That's fine. If that's the case, please just kill me. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I mean, you weren't exactly uh, an open book. You didn't seem like the type to be receptive, Michelle. Some of this is on you. I know I wasn't very open to anything you said, but if that day, when I found you in my room, you had told me I was mistaken, the sin belonged to my father. It might not have turned out like this. Oh, okay, put put the blame on her, Michelle. Shh. The knife. What? You were holding a knife. He was he acknowledged the fact that, you know, like the way that she reacted was like, you know, old wounds being opened up. Of course she was traumatized. She wouldn't be able to say anything. I, I give Michelle credit that he's listening to her. He's being honest with her. That you know, he's like, I'm not going to believe everything outright. He is taking her, um, you know, her feelings into account. But still, it's like, ah, of course she wouldn't tell you. Of course he, you know, the way you reacted, she wouldn't think he'd believe her. I can't handle blades anymore. Ever since what happened, they scare me to death. Just the sight of one in someone's hand, and I start thinking they're going to use it on me. I can't help it. I start shaking uncontrollably, growing faint of breath. The world goes white. I can't even form words. This is going to come back later, isn't it? There's nothing I can do. Now I finally see. She was grimacing in pain the day the package arrived when you knocked my hand away. Because I was scared. Because it reminded me of that time. I'd assumed she was simply jump jumpy from a guilty conscience. I felt nauseous, realizing I had been pouring a constant stream of salt on her unmendable wounds. What a damned fool I was. Why did you get so upset at me? Why did you have to point a knife at, a knife at me? I didn't want you snooping. If you meant to sell information about me- I mean, they're both coming at each other from, like, different points of view. He's- he can't trust people. She would look suspicious, you know? I could see his point of view, too, and then her point of view. Her thoughts are completely different, and they just didn't understand each other because they just they didn't talk to each other. That seems to be uh, a reoccurring theme in a lot of these visual novels I play. Is just like, but then again, it wouldn't make it as interesting, right? If people just sat down, they talked to each other, saw each other's points of view, a lot of these uh, miscommunications would not happen. I thought I had to do anything in my power to stop you. I'm still not convinced it was necessary. I was unarmed. I couldn't fight back. You didn't need a knife. And we don't- I don't even know about Michelle's background, you know? There's a lot of other things that- like, now that we know Giselle, that's the thing. I'm coming at this, I know Giselle, I know her backstory, I know, you know, what triggers her and how she's feeling. I'm not giving Michelle enough credit. We- I don't really know much about him. So he- he has his reasons too, I'm sure. I mean, the way that he's been treated by his family alone sent away in this mansion. Like, obviously, he has not had a great life. I have nothing left anymore, so I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. You're a jerk. <laughs> what you did was inexcusable. 
you may not have hurt me physically, but you still hurt me. I like, I like Giselle. Like, the white-haired girl, she's a sweet girl, but a lot of the time, uh, she was just... I don't know, a, a little bit too... Just letting people step all over her, not telling people how she felt. Humans are frail creatures. They wound easily. Apologize. What? Apologize to me. I said, apologize. I'm sorry. Again, put your heart into it. Convince me you mean it. Damn, for her just to be like an Abigail, like demanding an apology from a noble. I, I like it. I like that she's just, she's true to herself and she's just like, I'm not afraid to stand up for myself. I'm sorry. Again, once more, get down on your knees and shout it from your gut. She also probably is like maybe using him as like a, a surrogate for the father. You know, maybe she wants to believe because he's like the son, maybe him apologizing to her might make her feel better about what happened with the father. I am so very sorry. Was that a laugh? Jeez, you're such a strange man. Strange? You told me to do it. Nothing's going like I thought it would. I figured even if we talked, you would just deny everything I said. I didn't think you'd actually listen to me. But you did. You listened, and you looked quite distressed by what you heard. I looked distressed? Oh, yes, you sure did. I wish I'd had a mirror to show you. I'm sure you didn't want to believe what I said, but you didn't once accuse me of lying. You faced up to the truth, and you apologized. I seem to have had the wrong impression of you as well. I didn't try to see you for who you were, instead letting myself believe you were someone to be afraid of. Be honest, I didn't like you very much. The feeling was mutual, but for some reason, I don't feel that way now. This is where it begins. Their love story is going to begin now, but now that they've actually talked. Is it guilt? I need to apologize to you too. Apologize for what? I led the villagers here. I almost sold my soul to the devil. I tried to sell you out to save myself. And for that, I am truly sorry. I don't understand. What? Um, uh, do I need to get down on my knees too? No, that's not what I meant. The blame falls on the village for falsely accusing you for stealing. You were a convenient scapegoat for the real thieves. They planned to take advantage of you from the start. That Amade was probably in on it as well to get back at you for rejecting his proposal. Plus, giving the village a single target to let their frustrations on would, in a way, help unify them. He used you to meet that end. In order to escape from their trap, you told them about me. But this was after I had threatened you, causing you to flee from this place. You have nothing to apologize for. Still, I still feel really bad about it. So, I'm sorry anyway. You're unexpectedly stubborn. But now that we've both apologized to each other, we can call everything square. Square? Square. We were both in the wrong. So we apologized and we forgave each other. She gave a little smile, but all I could do was stare at her, brow furrowed in perplexity, like I was looking at some bizarre fantasy land creature. The weight of our crimes was not equal. What I had done to her was so very much worse. Furthermore, I am Antonin's son. His blood flows through me. Can you honestly say you don't find me revolting? That you're willing to forgive me for that? I didn't think I would be able to. If I were her, my grudge would extend to all my family, everyone I'd ever come into contact with. I can. Although, you don't need forgiveness for being his son. Being related to someone doesn't make you responsible for their sins. It wouldn't be fair to blame you for that. I mean, he literally... He's got the perfect alibi. He literally has not lived at home for like 10 years. He would have no idea what was going on. You're curious. What? Curious? About what? No, not that curious. You're a strange creature. I'm human, you know. Yes, I know you're human. You're making me lightheaded. Is it a medical emergency? That's quite the leap in logic. Haha. -ha. You know, I was at my lowest just a bit ago, and now I'm laughing again. 
It's odd. I never expected I would recover at all. I was just as surprised as her. She had been through hell. She had more than enough reason to despise me, to shower me with vitriol, but instead she was smiling. And even more, unex eh, and even more unexpected was the fact I felt relieved to see it. I really, truly wished I had gotten to know him sooner. I had fled from the mansion in fear of him, but maybe if I'd had just a little more courage, enough to tell him the truth, maybe he would have listened. I had let my initial impression of him solidify too quickly. I had convinced myself he was insensitive and perpetually expressionless, save for that arctic stare. But the man standing before me did experience sadness, pain, distress. Or, at the very least, he appeared to from where I was standing. Michelle was, just like me, an ordinary person. That said, there was still plenty I didn't know. I was still lacking explanations for much of his behavior. Would you mind telling me about yourself now? Yes, let's get into it. Come on, she laid it all bare. You gotta do the same. Tit for tat. I'd like to get to know you better. I have a feeling he still won't open up right away. What are you doing here in this mansion, all alone? Why do you call yourself cursed? I told you everything. It's only fair you do the same. I have no interest in using your information for anything. I have no reason to. Or are you going to keep pushing the master and servant line? Do you still think I have no need to know? Be quiet. For the love of God, stop talking already. You always pick the worst time. What? Ah. Uh, excuse me? What do you mean, I always pick the worst time? It's like she chose the wrong dialogue option in like a dating game, and now it's like, uh-oh, our affection has gone down. No, no, I wasn't. Unbelievable. Just when I was starting to think you might actually be a decent human being. Then you go and spout this. No, Giselle, I wasn't talking to you. Oh, he's talking to the witch. He's talking to the witch. Who else could it have been? I was talking to you, you know. I have I have a condition that forces me to vocalize objections to my own thoughts. It's not actually a witch. I don't I don't uh, I, I mean, we know that there's some there there is some like magic or something going on here. The fact that like all of these centuries have gone by and Giselle has not aged and she's been stuck in the mansion. So it can't be, I don't think it's a situation where everything I can just dis explain away, where like with him, you know, it's like where he says that there's a witch living in the house and he hears the witch talking, that maybe, does he have some sort of like disassociative identity disorder, schizophrenia, is he hearing voices, something like that, or maybe there truly is a witch living here, I don't know. You know, that's about as convincing as my allergic-to-people excuse. Sorry. Weirdo. <laughs> what crosses did he bear? What secrets did he keep? Maybe the truth was far beyond my reckoning. And if it was, even if he did, please tell me everything. No matter what you say, I won't doubt your words. I will trust you, and I'm sure I can accept anything you say. Please, come on, I'm, I'm begging on behalf too, like, I want to know more about him. If you don't put it into words, I have nothing to work with. Yes! Okay. Where should I start, though? Um, how about the curse, then? Are you actually cursed? That's a difficult question. I cannot, for example, take someone's life with my curse, nor can I bring about disaster. I don't have any magical powers like that. So, what you said outside was a bluff, then. It was just a way to chase the villagers away, and that's why Giselle used it for her story. Well, you certainly put on a convincing performance, so you can't actually curse anyone, huh? Regardless, I am human. Nothing more, nothing less. At least, I consider myself one. Others would disagree. And the reason for that has to do with my body. Oh, okay. Not like his his eyes or his hair, is that what he means? Your skin, hair, and eye color, right? No? Oh, right. Alright. 
it's just... I guess it's like back in the Middle Ages, if you look slightly different, people just think that you're like some sort of witch, I guess. Seeing Michelle, he's just very pale. That's all he- that's his only issue, is he's just very pale. As a fellow pale person. I sympathize. I don't have the white hair and the red eyes, but still. Seeing Michelle under the sun, he certainly wasn't what most people would consider normal. Awe-inspiring, in fact. Giving birth to me, it broke my mother. No, I drove her mad. Not only do I appear inhuman, I'm oversensitive to sunlight. While a little light through the window isn't much of a problem, I can't be outside, directly under the sun, for more than a couple of hours. When she realized I couldn't go out into the sun, my mother started thinking- Mar yeah, sorry, my mother started thinking I was possessed by a demon. So she banished me to this mansion until my curse was broken. That was ten years ago. Just because you look different from them? That's such an anticlimactic explanation. Wow, that's so ordinary. The family's reputation was at stake, too. If other noble houses realized they were giving refuge to an unholy creature, it would destroy the Bullingers. You saw how the villagers react, and this is like the story about the white hair girl, right? About, like, the, the first one with, um... The, the daughter being, uh, the white-haired girl was, you know, when she was born, she had the same look. She had that look of the father, so that kind of gave away that there was, like, infidelity going on, but also the fact that she looked kind of otherworldly. So maybe something similar happened. Maybe the mother had an affair that caused him to come out looking different than his siblings? You saw how the villagers reacted. They called me a demon when they saw me. I suspect the rumors about the mansion played a part in that. If nobody thought the house was cursed, they wouldn't have. I'm sure you were afraid as well. You saw me and thought I was not of this world, that I looked like a demon. I thought you looked like an angel. A what? <laughs> I'm remembering that CG of her screaming at him. I, I, that looked like a look of fear, but maybe it was admiration, I don't know. I at least thought you looked more like an angel than a demon. It never once crossed my mind you might be evil. But I understand your situation now. Because of your appearance, you've lived all alone in this dark mansion. For ten years. It was never really an inconvenience. They bring me all the supplies I need. I'm just like, how does how is he connected to the white hair girl when the maid kept seeing the white hair girl appear? Like, when she was waiting for, like, Michelle to show up, was the white-haired girl, like, a version of him? But wasn't quite him, but represented him? Because, like, they look identical. They're... The mom did say that there was, that she had a daughter. So I'm like, I'm just wondering, like, does, does he have a sister? Is the... Uh, ah. Ah. <laughs> there's that, there's gotta be that connection, right? You big liar. Have you never considered running away? That's not an option. Because of the sun? No, I could move during the night if I really wanted to. I'm being watched. To ensure I don't leave. Watched? They can't allow anyone to find out I'm alive. Particularly at the Bullinger estate. If I were to run, and they were to find out, I would probably be killed. If only I didn't stand out so much, I might be able to stay out of sight easier. But also... Also? I had been holding on to a little hope, I think. Hope that I might be able to return someday. I have all but given up that hope now. Oh, maybe that's why he was like so angry at her also, was like the fact that they sent her was just like, Oh, I am gonna be stuck here for the rest of my life. Not that I ever had enough willpower to really fight for it. I see. You don't need to worry about pitying me. It's long since become normal to me. That's not something that should ever become normal. So, what uh, what was that really a moment ago? You don't actually have a condition that makes you argue with yourself, do you? I... Please tell me. You don't have to believe me. In fact, I doubt you will. You're free to think I'm completely mad. Don't worry, I want to know. I... I can hear the witch's voice. 
the witch's voice? It started when I first arrived at the mansion. No one else can hear it, either. Like I said, it sounds crazy. Not at all. I said I would trust you, so I believe you. Maybe. Maybe he's not well. Yeah, that has to be it. Ten years all alone in one place? You're bound to start hearing things. He seems like a delicate person, too. Thinking about it like that, I'm starting to feel really sorry for him. Uh, do I want to know what you're thinking? I'm here for you. Huh? I've made up my mind. I'm going to stay here with you. Wait, what? Don't worry, I'll shout so loud you won't be able to hear that silly witch's voice anymore. Will you now? If you hear it again, let me know, understood? You don't have to be afraid and like, so then also like, yeah, when the white hair girl shows up, she always kind of sticks she always feels like, I have to stay in the mansion, I have to look after the master of the house. Is that, like, representative of, like, Giselle and Michelle's relationship? Uh, I, I just- I, I wish I knew how she factored into this. I feel like it's- it's obvious, and I'm just- I'm missing it. I never said I was- Whenever you hear it, I'll be there with you, holding your hand. Well, we kind of took the extremely long route, but there you have it. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Master. Master. Now, where should we begin? I know. Supper. Are you hungry? What should I make? S s slow down, please. What is it? If there's something you'd like, I'm happy to accommodate. You actually intend to stay here? Again? After what happened last time? Because of what happened. Because of that, we're finally able to see past each other's surface. I want us to try again, from the beginning, and this time, actually try to be considerate of one another's feelings. That's a promise, Master. Alright. I can stay here, right? I don't mind. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm glad to hear it. Say, yes, Master. If you ever want something from me, could I please ask you to put it into words? I don't have much faith in my ability to pick up on things. Got it. Then here's something to start with. What do you say we open some of these windows? Open the windows? Yeah, we don't have to if you think it will cause you problems, but it would be nice to get a little light in here. I'd like to put an end to this house being a dark, closed-off cave. I wasn't the one who barred the windows. You weren't? They were like that when I arrived made it seem like it was a very appropriate place to lock me away. While I'm sensitive to light, yes, as I mentioned, a little sun through the windows shouldn't cause any problems. Alright then, can I ask you to help me open them? Let's both lighten this place up. Well, that's good to see. That that was sweet. I'm, I'm glad that it's, like she said, it was a long roundabout way, but it, it's finally happening. After a few moments of silence, Michelle gave me a curt nod. While we couldn't do anything about the windows that had been boarded up, the two of us forced open the ones that were just covered by rusted, o uh, rusted over shutters. When we got the first one open, a beautiful stream of light, like nothing I'd ever seen before. Flooded into the dark mansion's halls. I'm sure that's like some sort of allegory for like, they were both in the dark about each other's past, but now... Now that everything's come out, the light comes in. A new beginning, as it were. <laughs> I had assumed that spring would never come. All we had to do was talk to each other, listen to each other, and everything else would fall into place. But it was that first step that was so hard, so much harder than either of us had expected. And now the ice was melting. We had to treasure that. It might not have seemed like much to someone else, but to us, it was a huge accomplishment. This time, it'll all work out. It has to. I had all the confidence in the world when we were together, but now that I'm alone, in the dark, in the absolute silence of the night, I'm starting to get anxious again. I'm starting to feel like something bad is going to happen. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, same. It's, uh, it's almost a little bit too good to be true right now. 
it just feels like you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like I'm going to mess something up again. We took a big step today, and I know I have to keep it together to keep thinking positive. The goods you're after, Giselle, are not cheap. Understand? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the woman hath committed three sins. She has lied, she has stolen, and she has betrayed her fellow man. Yeah, it just seems like Giselle's got, like, the worst luck. It's all right. It's okay. There's nothing to be afraid of, Giselle. Whatever happens, you have to hold fast to your faith in the goodness of others. You have no reason to tremble. I mean, given her past experiences, I wouldn't be surprised if she just lost all hope in the goodness of people. Ah, yes, come in. That's odd. I don't think I was hearing things. There's no one there. What was that about? Oh? A glass? It's wine, and it's so warm. I guess he heated it on the fire for me. Oh, you... you could have at least said hi. Hee <laughs> hee. I have a feeling this is going to work out. Alright, now we're back to present time. The light shining in through the windows is swallowed whole by the darkness, as if to say our time together never actually existed. We saw it, though. Together, we watched the light crack open the darkness. I'm begging you, please remember. Please find yourself. Please, Giselle, don't let the things you felt, the warmth that fell over us, remain lost to you. It's funny how it's like it's flipped. Or now he's the one trying to get her to remember where it was her trying to get him to remember the past. I might have seen it. Seen the most beautiful light. Giselle. But are these truly my memories? Could they not be someone else's tale? Like all the others we have seen so far? She was so bright and energetic, and I am either of those. Okay, are we going to go back to like maybe go through those again, the whole thing with the white hair girl, and maybe see it from another point of view. Besides, the maid needs not a tale of her own. This is not a story. These are memories. Mine and your memories, no one else's. It was all very much real. As were the kinder, happier days that came next. Kinder, happier days. Those words create a strange warmness within my chest, but at the same time, they make me indescribably anxious. Is there really happiness to be found down that road? Even if our past doesn't lead to happiness, it couldn't be worse than where we are now. <laughs> we'll see about that. Come, Giselle. The spring that made us more than just strangers. Alright, now we're going to get into the actual, their love story. Master, come on, get up. Up with you. Master! What? See? What did I tell you? It's so much nicer in here with a little light. Morning? Ah, w wait a sec. Don't you hide under your bedspread. Get out of there. I'm fine with my room staying dark. What is she even doing in here? Oh, but Master... You agreed that I could open the windows. I did, yes. Don't worry, I put curtains up. If it gets too bright, you can draw them. Mornings take the best parts of being outside and squeeze them all into the same few hours. You don't have to go outside in the sunlight for it either. Just listen to all those wonderful sounds. The joyous songs of the birds, the swaying of the trees, the rustling of leaves. Am I being as pushy as I feel right now? Maybe a little bit. She just kind of walked into his room and was just like... she She's getting a little comfortable. I don't know how much time has passed, but... <laughs> kind of. But you wouldn't be if you weren't, so for now, I won't get on you about it. Also, now that I know your real intentions... Um, 
No, never mind. Hee <laughs> hee. I completely misjudged you. You're the exact opposite of what I thought you were. What did you think of me? Let's see. I thought you were cold and cruel. Heartless and incomprehensible. But I'm beginning to get a better idea. You try to put on airs, but you're really rather childish. You have a short temper, but can be surprisingly playful. What else? You have a pretty difficult personality, too. There's not a single good trait on that list. Now, now, hear me out here. That's not everything. You gave me a chance to talk, and you listened intently. You can be kind of nice, too. We agreed we would live together, yet uh, not just in the same house, so we've got plenty of time to add more to the list. And, I hope, you can make your own list about me, too. This is just the beginning, after all. We've got a long, long time ahead of us. Plenty enough to get to know each other, no? Let's not waste any time, then. What do you say we do something today that we haven't been able to do before? Where should we begin? Oh, I know. We can get this place cleaned up. He's like, uh, you're the maid, you do the cleaning. <laughs> you want to clean? Now that there's some actual light in here, we can see all sorts of things we'd probably rather not. Like dust. All over the place. Hee <laughs> hee. My vision was still slightly unfocused, having not completely escaped from Morpheus's embrace. But I could see well enough to catch her smiling brightly. That was the first time I'd gotten a good look at her in the light. I could see facial features I had missed during yesterday's commotion, and those glittering eyes. Not even a trace of the tribulation she had endured tainted her pure jade eyes. She's surprisingly good-looking. I am clearly not myself right now. Is something the matter, Master? I know, you're still half asleep, aren't you? I guess I'm just going to have to throw my best bucket of water on you. What is a best bucket of water? I'm awake, I'm awake. Is there something on my face then? Just far too amusing a sight to wake up to. Uh, amusing? Oh, just get out of bed already. What a noisy morning. I got my first decent uh, I got my first decent look at Michelle's face under the light that morning, watching him stifle a yawn as he crawled out of bed. All the little details I hadn't been able to pick up on in the darkness, his expressions, mannerisms, and the way he looked at me. I could see facial features I'd missed during yesterday's commotion, and those vivid, all-consuming red eyes. I was probably, no, almost certainly, making a really dumb face at him. Is it just me? Or is he... kind of... no, very pretty. <laughs> How could I have not notice until now? Don't you hate it when guys are pretty- like, as a girl, when a, when guys are prettier than you? It's just like, oh, It's like, it's, it's just not fair. Oh, geez, wow. I can't look him in the eyes. Um... Yes? W what What can I do for you? Is there something on my face? What? I, uh, no. Ha. Uh, ha? Uh? Hair monster! <laughs> Excuse me? Um, no, uh, your hair. It's really long. Yes, that's it. Way too long. Ho oh, ho, is that any way for a servant to speak to her master? Ah. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't have any interest in holding your status against you anymore. Ah, uh, I see. It's really hard to tell if he's joking or not. So, about that cleaning, may I wash my face first? What? You're going to help? As I just said, I'm not going to act like I'm superior to you anymore. What are you snickering about? I can't help it. I'm happy. Hee <laughs> hee. If my hair really does bother you, you can cut it. Huh? I, I can cut it? O of course, I'll give you the best haircut you've ever had. But I should warn you, you'll want to stay perfectly still. I'm a monster with a pair of scissors. My sister always said you were as likely to lose an ear as you were your hair whenever I cut it. He's like, can I take back what I said? 
You stay away from me. I was shocked at how much more comfortable I felt around her only one day following our opening up to each other. Maybe this was normal, and I'd simply never felt it before. I didn't know. I thought it would take years of work to get close enough to someone to be able to have a conversation without picking apart every little detail. But here I was, a day later, already there. Was that how it usually worked? Did people normally get close and draw apart so freely? I didn't find it unpleasant to have someone else around. It was a strange feeling. All that friction had dissipated in an instant. And it was like we had known each other for years. Though not entirely willing, we began sharing meals, something I'd always done by myself. Hey, I see you shoving aside that parsnip. You need to eat everything. Do you have any idea why there was so much rotting parsnip in the cellar? I don't care for it. You could at least pretend to be ashamed. Yeesh, you're not a kid, so don't be so picky. He's like, you're not my mom, so stop bitching at me. <laughs> it's not good for you. Hasn't caused any problems thus far. It will soon enough. I can't believe you. We have limited supplies and you won't eat your vegetables? Oh, question. I've got an idea. She's got- she's gotten very comfortable. Go on. Is the list of supplies sent by your family set in stone? Meaning? I was just wondering if it was possible to make requests. If I could, I would just go out on a shopping trip. Perish the thought. The one village around here is the one you came from. Right. Say, are you saying that out of concern for... Who would ever be concerned about you? I just want to be able to sleep well at night. And I'm not interested in throwing more servants to the lions. You know, you're a whole lot simpler of a person than I first thought. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing. Back to your question about the delivery. Yes, you can. I haven't made any requests recently, but you can write what you want on a sheet of parchment. Or, if we don't have any, something similar. Put it in the box and leave it outside. As long as your request is not completely unreasonable, it should arrive with the next package. Why? Is there something you need? Yeah, I was hoping to increase our selection of vegetables. And while I'm at it, if possible... Actually, that's a secret. A secret? It's nothing too exciting. I'll tell you when the time is right. My relationship with Michelle gradually transitioned from master and servant to something closer to friends. He was still my master, but he allowed me almost complete freedom. And he didn't order me around either. He even gave me a hand with my work. Though he was still not very talkative, and oftentimes hard to read. He at least seemed to be making an effort to close the gap. He would on occasion tell me about himself, though not in much detail, and any time his family came up, he grimaced uncomfortably. Apparently, his father had wanted him dead. His brothers, though, had worked to create a scenario in which he could, in which he could live, faking his death and sending him to this remote mansion. I had never encountered Michelle's brothers while at his family's estate, but assuming he was right, and it was one of them who gave me that letter, they were likely our only allies at that house. I don't know what he's thinking. It's been ten years, Michelle had muttered. To which I had replied, Have faith. It was better to believe in something, even if it felt silly and unreasonable, than to lose faith in everything. My being able to find renewed belief in the kindness of people was what had allowed me to start smiling again, after all. Because I was able to have that faith, I was able to enjoy life once more. It wasn't an exciting or thrilling life, it was a humble, simple one, with just the two of us. But I wouldn't trade that light for anything. Some people might think it dull or dreary, but it was ours. <laughs> I think she's had enough excitement in her life for the rest of her life. Master, I really, truly appreciate that you want to help with the cooking. I do, honestly, but... This is apocalyptic. This is mutinous. This is an affront to gastro gastronomy. This is unearthly disgusting. Get me better ingredients. What? I am not a bad cook. These are simply bad ingredients. If they were better, they would taste just fine boiled. 
And it's not as bad as you claim, besides. She's like, well, then you eat them. <laughs> you make a mockery of the culinary arts. I've been eating this for years. I don't see the problem. I've heard quite enough, Master. It sounds like I'm going to need to put your taste buds through some intense rehabilitation. I have to teach him what real food tastes like. Otherwise, he won't be able to appreciate it if I make him something really good. Hold the chair steady for me, will you? I'm going to wipe down the top shelf. I can handle it. I'm tall enough to reach without standing on a chair. It's not as simple as just running a rag over it. I've got practice, so let me take care of it, alright? Hmm, there's a lot more dust than I expected. I probably should have used something to cover my mouth. You're going to want to hold your breath for this, Master. Alright, here goes. She's quite practiced. Is there any need for me to be holding the chair? Ah, hmm? Ah, ah, choo! Ah, ah! What? Uh, whoa! Hold the chair! Ow! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't think there would be that much dust. Thank you for holding the... Uh, master? Your hand is... What? Your hand is, uh... It's on my... my chest. <laughs> I, uh... I... No, I... It was an accident. Right, it was. I'm, uh... It's fine, really. It was my fault, anyway. It's completely, totally fine. Uh... I can't even look her in the eyes. Could this be any more painfully awkward? So... So don't worry about it, Master. Honestly, I should be apologizing for subjecting you to that. That's easier said than done. I have to do something about the stifling awkwardness. For one, it was only for a moment. I barely even realized what it was. But that's not the issue. I need some clever way to brush all this aside. Something witty that tells her I'm not bothered at all. He's gonna fuck this up, isn't he? Gonna make it more awkward? I'm not concerned. In fact, I see no reason to be concerned at all. It felt like I was squeezing an obese rat! Oof. Oof. I knew he was gonna say something weird, but I never... Never would have expected that. Oh, gosh. That's how I'm gonna refer to my chest now. To my husband. <laughs> Is it not like squeezing an obese rat? Oh, my gosh. I hardly even perceived it as a breast. <laughs> oh, my gosh. An obese rat. An... Obese? Rat? What? How utterly insensitive can you be? I'm gonna rip every last hair off your head. God, leave my hair out of this! <laughs> Who would have thought this game would have, like, comedy parts of it? It's nice to have some moments of lightness. Say, Master, what did you do all this time by yourself? That's an exceedingly vague question. Um, say when you were really, really stupidly bored out of your mind. What did you do to keep yourself occupied? Meditate? Just how many times have you reached enlightenment? I sometimes play chess, too. Chess? Wait, by yourself? Yes, I imagine how an opponent might react to my moves and play the other side that way. That's kind of depressing to think about. How about this, Master? Play a game against me. You know the rules? You bet I do. I do come from a family of merchants, so I keep up with trends and know all sorts of games. Oh-ho! Prepare to meet your maker. So, who was I supposed to prepare to meet again? Rrrg. Come on, have a little mercy. You trounced- you trounced me! One more time, I just wasn't at the top of my game. Rrrg! <laughs> when am I going to meet this maker? What? How? When did you put me in checkmate? One more. That's the rest of this episode. It's just gonna be her losing to chess over and over again. Hold on, that's not fair. Take it back! My king! Please stop! Amateur. Nah. Can't you go a little bit easy? You never asked me to go easy. 
This isn't a game. This is a slaughter. This is a one-sided massacre. About this maker. I'm looking right at him. That was actually kind of fun. No, it wasn't. It was miserable. Next time, we're playing something fair. Such as? Let's see. Oh, I know. Arm wrestling. <laughs> huh? Arm wrestling? Yeah, you sit across from each other, you put your elbow on the table, grab hands, and see who can pin the other down. He's so, like, anemic-looking and skinny, I bet she could trounce him at arm wrestling. Because, you know, like, she's used to, like, doing labor and stuff. Who would ever willingly participate in such a primitive competition? Not interested, then? Or are you afraid you might lose? Alright, then. I can't imagine losing to a woman. He's only gonna lose to a woman. Okay, elbow on the table. Start on my count. Ready? Go. Yep, I was right. Nah? Victory! It's pretty sweet to see. It's, uh, after, like, how they started off with, it, it was hard to picture it getting to this point, but it is nice to see it. I can see why you guys really like Michelle. I didn't know what to think of him at first, but yeah, I'm definitely, like, just like with Giselle, I I'm coming around on him for sure. With each passing day, it grew less and less unusual having someone, having Giselle always at my side. I began more freely engaging in silliness, speaking my mind and showing emotion. I could say her name, and Giselle would turn around and smile at me. An unimaginable sight not long ago. For ten years. For ten years I had lived alone. Solitude had been my normal. But that was very rapidly changing at her hands. We were continually getting closer, yes but not in a romantic sense. I'd describe it. I would say good friends was probably the most apt. Well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe maybe it was just they were just good friends the whole time, but I have a feeling it's going to turn into more than that. Time continued to press on, our relationship remaining relatively stable. Eventually, summer came, bringing with it the longest periods of sunlight I'd experienced in many years. Then, the leaves began falling from the trees, and before long, the world grew cold and dreary. That winter, the, s the fireplace was never without a crackling blaze in its belly. The boiled wine we drank was undoubtedly middling and cheap. But she said with a smile, I've never had wine this good before. And though I didn't say anything, I felt the same way. The sun set much earlier, and having stopped using candles, we found ourselves habitually gathering around the fireplace when it grew dark. Aww. Reading a story by the fireplace like this almost makes it feel like we're in another world, doesn't it, Master? I bet that's why troubadours perform at pubs, so they can be, or be near the fire. Or because there's ale. Drunkenness makes even bad singing and storytelling pleasant to the ears. Oh, you're such a cynic. But that's okay. Say, yes? Do you remember when I first arrived here? When I was cleaning the library. Please don't tell me you're bringing the obese rat incident back up. No, not that. Before that. Before we could actually, like, actually talk to each other. I believe I suggested we read something together if you ever felt the inclination. You might have. I can't say I remember. <laughs> I imagine that obese rat comment, he, like, wakes up at 2 in the morning randomly, being like, why the fuck did I say that? We've all had those moments where we'll just remember something from, like, five years ago and be like, oh my god, why? <laughs> Are you sure about that? He turned down my proposal, saying I was wasting my time. But look, it actually happened. Even if you don't remember, I'm sure you never thought this moment would come. I was, for the most part, focused on making sure things didn't get any worse between us. But to be honest, I didn't expect there would ever actually come a time we would sit shoulder to shoulder and read a book. You never know how things might pan out. I actually do remember. I remember how I tried to push her away. How much I mistrusted her. 
I was nothing but hostile toward her. People change, and perhaps if they can, so can the future. Maybe I can hope that, like our friendship, there's a chance the future might take a turn for the better. Is something the matter? I don't care much for hypotheticals, but if, if by some chance, I were, someday, to be able to return to that house. Should that time come, that house is home to her nightmares. Even if it didn't happen until after my father was gone, he wouldn't erase what he had done to her there. She acts like nothing's wrong, though. I don't know. Have her wounds healed, or do they still remain? Should that time come, should that time come, if that day comes, I will do what I can to ensure you have a comfortable life in the city. Though I will not be able to inherit the estate, I can work something out. I- I see. Thank you very much. But, if you would be comfortable doing so, I would be pleased if you were to join me. Ah, um, I mean, as a servant. As a servant. Yes, a servant. We're, um, short on hands. How does he know? <laughs> Unless maybe he gets letters from home saying that? I see, a servant. Do I really need to repeat myself? Yes, as a servant. Hee <laughs> hee, alright. Sure, I think I will. I would like to accompany you, Master. How exciting. I'm sure a wonderful future awaits us. Uh, which means all the bad stuff's gonna start happening, right? I mean, something had to happen for us to get to the point where we are now, where uh, Michelle lost all his memories, the maid has been stuck at the house, unable to leave, seemingly, like, given eternal life. I pray so. Now, back to the story. Especially, like, if Michelle came back, I would assume as a ghost or something? Like, so he died. I don't know how. We'll probably find out. I believe we had just gotten to the point where the knight set out to defeat the monster and save the princess. I bet he was a big, buff, muscular knight. Let's not talk about how muscular he was. She let out a gentle laugh, and I thought I smelled something sweet on her breath. Was it her scent? Or perhaps just my imagination? I had no way of knowing. We sat so close, even the slightest shift seemed sufficient to allow me to hear the sound of her heartbeat causing mine to accelerate. Curiosities flooded my mind. What might she be thinking right now? What did she think about me? And as much as I tried to banish them, I frustratingly failed. I was just getting caught up in the moment. I had just briefly lost my way, though I tried to convince myself otherwise. It was all in vain. When had my pulse gotten so rapid? When had my skin gotten so flushed? When, how, why was this happening to me? I thought I'd already learned my lesson, about having feelings for someone else- Oh, okay. Let's get into this. Before long, winter retreated, and our second spring came to take its place. A full year had passed since we'd resumed living together, and I don't think it was my imagination that this year felt much warmer than last. Spring seemed to have arrived a bit earlier than in previous years. One night, when the breeze carried on a pleasant residual warmth, Giselle escorted me out to the garden. Come on, master. Hurry up. It's the middle of the night. What's so important? I just found it myself, and I couldn't wait until morning. I wonder if it's a white rose. Yep. A rose. It blossomed. Maybe not a white rose, but a rose, and that was the start of, like, the... That's something that just keeps coming back. A rose? Giselle had, over the past year, cleaned up the nest of weeds that had been strangling the garden, off to the side of a small plot of turned soil, swaying in the wind beneath the moonlight, was a single red rose. When did you... Last year, I requested flower seeds, but I just couldn't get them to grow, and I was starting to think they never would. But look, it's only one, but it did. I had no idea. Of course you didn't. I didn't tell you. Why would you keep it from me? I wanted to make it a gift for you, Master. What? Why? Roses make wonderful gifts, supposedly. No, that's not what I meant. Why me? I haven't given you anything. 
Consider it a symbol of my hope. We'll still be this close another year from now. If we are, then this is yours. I don't follow her reasoning. I don't follow it at all, but... The sight of the deep red rose almost melting into the dark night was perhaps the most wondrous thing I'd ever seen in my life. I'd never understood why some people found flowers so enchanting. They were always just plants to me, but... But that one, on that night, was an undeniably beautiful, majestic, and like a young child seeing a flower for the very first time, my hand automatically reached out for it. <laughs> Why do I seem to be playing games? Games specifically about, like, mansions with rose gardens. And, like, what a, what a random, like, specific kind of repetitive thing to happen to me with the games that I play. It's kind of funny, actually. So now I'm thinking back to those times with, like, the white-haired girl where she held the flower and it changed color and all the times the roses have come back up again. Not knowing the proper way to appreciate flowers, I didn't gently caress its petals or take in its fragrance, but snapped its stem. Oh, dude. Oh, you picked it? Are you gonna bring it back to your room? I'm just afraid that he just immediately, like, crushed it. When I finally processed her question, that was when I realized I probably should have left it to grow in the garden. From the base of its stem, where I'd plucked it, a droplet succumbed to gravity and fell to the earth. With it came the delayed realization that I'd ended the plant's life, but it was overpowered by childish possessiveness. The stunning flower was mine. Moonlight trickled down from the heavens, giving a gentle bluish tint to my hands and the smile on her face. You're going to need a vase, then. Give me just a minute. For the briefest moment, the moonlight must have played a trick on my mind. Ah, that's where she got the rose! I can't believe I didn't make that connection. When they had the flashback of who she was and she was wearing the rose in her- in, Oh, huh? Uh, Master? What on earth am I doing? And it was like with the white hair girl, right? Where he brushed her, like, her ear or something? That was just like what he did with her. A look of bewilderment filled Giselle's face, just inches from mine, which hammered in the reality of what I had just done. The thought had crossed my mind that perhaps her black hair might prove a good backdrop for the rose, but it was supposed to remain a simple fancy. What was that about? An excuse. I need a good excuse. Come up with something better than obese rat, please. Uh, a drawing. A drawing? Right. I would like to preserve it on canvas. What? Um, what? I mean, that a rose on its own does not make a very compelling picture. So I'd like to include you as an accessory. Wait, you... you want to draw me too? Merely as a background element. <laughs> nice, Michelle. You're simply more interesting than a vase, that's all. What... what a charmer. <laughs> I've never seen you draw anything before. I just never got the urge- I just like to imagine he draws something, it's just her as like a stick figure, it's awful. You know how? Many, many years ago, my brother taught me. I don't think I can handle being a model. I've never had a drawing done of me before. You would probably be better off with just the rose. You gave it to me, didn't you? That means I'm free to do with it as I please. I, I did. I didn't mean to sound so rude. I had no real interest in drawing the rose. But I couldn't just take it back, either. Giselle had shrunk back quite visibly, and I couldn't bring myself to look her in the eyes. So I fled to the cellar in search of supplies to escape the oppressive awkwardness. Oh, Michelle, he's like so cute and just like he just makes everything just way more awkward. At the far wall, I found a rectangular panel of wood and several sticks of charcoal. My materials were obviously nothing compared to what a court artist might use. But I was clearly not going to be able to do the portrait any kind of justice. God, what am I doing? I want to bury my head in the sand. Giselle was waiting for me in the stained glass chamber. It seemed she was still just as uncomfortable as when I had left her. She gave me a fleeting glance before averting her gaze again. If only she would laugh or make a scene like usual, it would make things so much easier. Why did she have to choose now to start acting meek? Um, what should I be doing? Stay perfectly still, please. Do you need me to pose or anything? 
No, just get comfortable. Look away. Why? It's hard to work when you're watching me. Um, what? I feel like I have to sneeze. Hold it in, please. <laughs> um, what now? Can I see it? I've barely drawn anything yet. As long as our eyes didn't meet, I was able to observe her, and my gaze was quite clearly not focused on the rose. But Giselle, at first I'd regretted my in-the-moment proposition, but I was beginning to think it hadn't been such a bad idea. Without some sort of pretext, it would never have been able I would have never been able to examine her so intently. I didn't have that kind of courage. I wonder if the picture of her is somewhere in the mansion. This isn't like me. But what was like me? Did I prefer being a sharp-tongued, unapproachable recluse? Was that what I wanted to strive for? Giselle was like a gale. Her mere presence dispersed the gloomy cloud that always hovered around me. Thinking about it, it's practically a miracle that we ever ended up so comfortable around each other, that she's still here right now. Light from the moon spilled through the stained glass window, taking on a multitude of pale tones before falling on her white skin and jade eyes. I had stopped sketching at some point. What in the world was going on? One of my roses had finally bloomed, which I thought would put a, uh, put a smile on Michelle's face. But rather than improve his mood, it had made him go all strange. It had made him say he wanted to draw something. I had never seen Michelle draw anything before. Ugh, I can't sit still. I tried to sneak peeks of him every once in a while. But any time our eyes met, he gave me a stern, look-that-way stare. So I ended up spending a whole lot of time looking at the archangel in the stained glass window. What could he be thinking? Could this be thanks for the rose? I'm pretty sure he's not the type who would consider a drawing an expression of gratitude, though. If I'm wrong about that, he'll turn my whole world upside down. Maybe he wanted to draw me. No, not possible. That would turn the world upside down even faster. He couldn't. We're close, to be sure, but we're not that kind of close. That makes it sound like... like Michelle's uh, attracted to me. And there's no way. There's absolutely no way. He compares me to an obese rat and calls me an amateur at chess, laughing while he crushes me. So that's not what this is, is it? It's like the guys who pick on the girls that they like. I would just say that means he's comfortable with you. Um, huh? Oh, yes? If, if it's too much trouble, you're free to leave. This might, will take a very long time to complete. Oh, no, no trouble. You had a very stern look on your face, is all. I was doing that bad job at hiding it? I don't want to force you to do anything you don't want. It was foolish of me to ask of you. I'm sorry. Honestly, it's no trouble. I mean it. You just took me by surprise, that's all. I'm not even that great of an artist to begin with. That's not a talent I was blessed with. If I'm being honest with myself, I can't imagine anyone would be pleased to have bad art drawn of them. What? What is he getting so negative about? I wasn't the only one making a face. His head was turned slightly downward, a forlorn shimmer in his eyes. I had never seen him make that face before. He resembled a child who'd just been scorned by his mother. I wasn't at all angry or displeased with him. I was just fine, honestly. I had to get that through to him. I am pleased. It doesn't matter how it turns out. You drew it for me, master. Whether it's good or bad is irrelevant. I would, but the moonlight shining through the stained glass was so enchanting, I lost myself in it. I would be happy with anything drawn for me by the man I love. Oh, damn, she's coming right out. Ooh. Ooh, that just slipped right out, didn't it? For an instant, time froze. By the time I realized what I'd said, my mind had gone blank and I couldn't form a coherent thought. Uh, uh, I mean, like, you know, like family. You're like an older brother to me. Oh, no, that's the worst thing to say. I meant love, like love for a brother. Hey, hey, say something, master. Give me your usual exasperated sigh. Come on now, this is where he's going to confess his love to. Go on, give me your best good grief, and then hurl me out the window. 
Come on, please, show me some disappointment. Haha. Uh, master? Ah! When the wood panel he was using as a canvas and the charcoal in his hand crashed to the hard chapel floor, the clattering was so loud I jumped. I didn't have the presence of mind to wonder why he had knocked over the canvas, or why his hands appeared to be shaking. Ah, uh, let me help you with that. I stepped towards him. And when I did... Here we go. The moonlight shining down upon us intens intensified. And our gazes... Of Jade and Ruby. Ah, I love how it's like combined now. It's like the pink and the blue are representing their thoughts now. There was a visible rosiness in his ethereal pil ethereally pale cheeks. Um, Master? Flickers of panic darted beneath the surface of his normally stony, red eyes. They were trembling as he looked over at me. I was at a loss for words. We must have been under the moon's spell. We weren't thinking. We stood alone in a frozen world, robbed of all rational thought. Riding the moonlight's current, his hand fell against my cheek. It was much colder than I had expected, but it felt pleasant on my flushed skin. We drew closer. I could feel the warmth emanating from his body, and I'm sure he could feel mine. The beating of my heart, too. His breathing stopped for a moment, then he gulped. He brought his head in. I closed my eyes, and... Oh, no. Ah! No, I... I... Oh, poor girl. Then I shoved him away with all my strength. Michelle rolled back, knocked his head on the side of a pew, and began groaning in pain, which, when I, which is when I finally realized what I had done. What, what, what have you done, Giselle? I, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Um, 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 are you hurt? Yeah, unfortunately, with a traumatic experience, you can't just have, like, some good times with someone and expect it all to just blow over and everything is okay again. I'm fine. S s s sorry I, uh, you startled me. I really, truly didn't mean to knock you down. You should go back to your room. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused you tonight. What? Get some rest. Good night. Aw, oh, damn. He turned away, marching off into the corridor, as shrouded in darkness. There was a heavy air of loneliness hanging over him, which gave rise to phantom images of him actually disappearing into the darkness. I could see him, like, internalizing that as being, like, he's- maybe he realizes it's from her experience with his father, but I could also see him being, like, I am incapable of being loved. I shouldn't have expected that to happen. I was reading too much into it. I had caused that, but I hadn't realized until it was too late. It felt like someone was sitting on my chest. Why would I ever do that to him? Of course I'm going to hurt him reacting like that. Maybe I was hoping he would say it was just one of his jokes. Do I want it to be a joke? I had that option. I could pretend nothing ever happened and tomorrow go back to the way things were before. But if I did that, there would almost certainly never be a second chance. You were okay with it. You wanted it, Giselle. Quit lying to yourself. You're the one who said you loved him, and that was no mistake. You wouldn't sit shoulder to shoulder and read a book with someone you didn't care for. You wouldn't enjoy eating supper with someone you didn't like. You wouldn't be able to live happily with someone you didn't love. You have to go after him, find him, and tell him the truth. What am I doing, for God's sake? I'm not in my right mind. Something about me was off today. I couldn't control myself. I was saying things I didn't mean, doing things I didn't intend to. Maybe he's gonna have that realization be like, no, no, I meant all those things. I had never meant to do that. But at this point, I had no choice but to admit my feelings. I couldn't pretend I didn't know what they were anymore. How long had I felt this way? A week? A month? Six months? Or maybe... A full year? 
Had they already developed when we started anew? No, the wind didn't matter. It didn't change the facts. I was still attracted to her, regardless of when it had begun. Ah, but she pushed me away, quite literally. I sighed at myself. Why should I be disappointed? She was nothing like me. I knew it. I knew he was going to internalize it as like it being because of him. I was reclusive and unsociable. She was the exact opposite. She was the kind of person who would confidently tell someone how she felt. And she had done exactly that. Said I was like a brother. But I hadn't listened. Oh, right. I forgot about that part. <laughs> I could see why he would be like, I was reading too much into it. As a matter of fact, could I have been any more presumptuous? I don't deserve to love anyone. It's better this way. I... Master, I'm glad that, like, instead of stewing about it and letting the feelings go unsaid for, like, days or weeks like it would normally happen, like, she's going to be like, I, I'm going to clear this, the air. Because the last time that they didn't communicate, it led to them being, like, miserable for a long time. I told you to go back to your room. Master, I need you to listen to me, okay? What? About, about what just happened. That does, that doesn't count. You can't count any of that. Huh? That I said I loved you, and that I shoved you. They don't count. Ah, right. I was planning to forget that anyway. So don't worry. No, that's not what I meant. What I'm saying is, it's not something I should have said on a whim. Just because the moonlight was kind of pretty tonight. It wasn't supposed to be so casual. The way I said it doesn't get across at all how much I really care about you. It should have been said... Uh, it should have been something with more impact, rather. Me looking you straight into your eyes. My heart jumping around like it's on fire. That's how I should have said it. What? What are you... I'm saying I want you to give me one more chance to do it right. Giselle. I... 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 Calm yourself. I... I am calm. In no sense of the word are you calm. Fine, then I'm not calm. But I am clear-headed. I mean every last word. Listen. Listen very carefully. I... I... I love... I love you. I love you so much it feels like it, my heart's going to explode. What? Huh? You mean, like family? Like a brother, right? Romantic love! Romantic! What? I wasn't... I wasn't upset back there. No, I was elated. What? My mind couldn't keep up with what it was hearing. Half out of breath where she stood, Giselle was frantically insisting that she loved me. Was I dreaming? Um, Master? How... how do you... I would like to hear how you feel about me. Assuming I interpreted that correctly, you were going in for a kiss back there, right? Right? So I can take that as your answer? Ah... Giselle looked at me with bleary eyes. She... she had feelings. For me. It was a miracle. I could hardly breathe. It felt like someone had stuck their hand in my chest and was squeezing my heart. I just had to say yes, and a smile would spread across her face. I could bring her joy, and all it would take was a single word. Dude, do it! Why does it make it seem like he's not going to? I had no reason to say no. My happiness was standing right there in front of me. He's not gonna do it. He's not gonna do it. He's gonna feel like he doesn't deserve happiness or something. What more could I ask for? All I had to do was reach out and claim it for myself. I had tried to do exactly that in the chapel, and I could do it again. I, I, come on, dude, come on. I'm like so invested in this right now. I loved her. I was a twisted man, cast out of the world and left with nothing. I had no way to make her happy, but still, I... Come on, don't be like, oh, I don't deserve her. Just do it. Please, don't tell me you forgot what you are. Oh, no. That's probably his family or, like, going on with him. He thinks he's cursed or whatever. He's like, I don't deserve love. He's not going to do it. Tell me. I... There was no moonlight to give me that nudge. Do not feel that way about you. No... It was too good to be true. It was too good to be true. What? That's awkward. 
I got confused for a moment. I apologize for the misunderstanding that seemed to have caused. All the color drained from her, like a flower wilting before my eyes. A heavy sigh spilled from her lips. Her jade eye swayed lifelessly back and forth. I hadn't thought mere love could possibly have such weight, but she looked as though I just told her she was to be executed. I, I see. I'm sorry. I let it get to my head. Ah, uh, haha. Sorry for making such a racket. Really, God, what was I thinking? I got way ahead of myself there. Her faux energy hurt to watch. I had hurt her, and this was the result. You wanted to protect yourself, even if it meant hurting her. But look where that got you. You would have been better off just going with it. Because when she learned the truth, she would have pushed you away anyway. I'm sorry. I'll be going now. Sorry for barging in on you like that. She made her way into the shadows toward the door. There, you did it. You preserved your peace. I got the feeling she would never, ever again turn back. Your mistake was ever getting close to anyone. What I always wanted was right there in front of me, and I was so close to obtaining it. And you pushed her away. I actually did love her. She would have never loved the real you. No, she couldn't. Ah, uh, what is his... Okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. We're getting into his past now. I need to know what's going on here. You're disgusting. I can't believe you actually had the gall to fall for me. Oh, that's right. He said that there was like... Oh, that's right. He said that there was a girl before, like another love he had. Aw, oh, dude. Good night, master. She was leaving. I wanted her here, and she was leaving. I simply had to acknowledge my feelings, and she would come back. Was I really content to let her go? In my weakness, I mistreated her. I hurt her. I let her go, and I was about to lose her, even though she said she loved me. And I felt the same way. But wait, please don't go. Your voice is shaking like a scared child's. What are you hoping to tell her like that? I... She was different. She was probably, no, she absolutely was nothing like anyone in my past. She won't be any different. I decided I would try just one more time. Is she going to believe him at this point? I hope she does. She's not going to just be like, you're just saying that to placate me because you feel bad for me. To believe in myself and to believe in someone else. I lied. Giselle, from the bottom of my heart, I... You'll regret this. No, I won't. I sincerely love you. Yay! Okay. Why did I think that she wasn't gonna immediately, like... I was afraid that she was gonna be like, Oh, he's just doing that to, like, make me feel better. The fragrance of Rose enveloped me. Her arms wrapped around my chest. Her both imbued with strength and shaking like mad. As though the slightest touch might shatter them. She's like, please don't play these games. Let's, if we're gonna start this relationship, like, you gotta be honest with your feelings. Why didn't you just say that in the first place? She said in a quavering, sniveling voice just inches from my ear. I lacked sufficient control over my mind or body to return her embrace, to run my hands through her hair, or do anything more than support her weight. I'm sorry. Jerk. Bully. Brute. You don't get to play with this one off as a joke. I'm truly, sincerely sorry. You've given me two different stories. Tell me, which one is the truth? Were you just confused? Or do you actually love me? I want to hear you say it again. The truth is, I love you. Again, I... I love you. Without fumbling this time. I love you, as I've said several times now. Not good enough. Again. Have mercy, please. I'm about to die of humiliation. Can I... Can I really believe you this time? You're not going to say you were lying again? No, I won't. Then... Then we both feel the same way about each other? Shockingly enough. What's there to be shocked about? I didn't think there was anything likable about me. Ugh, you really have to do something about that pessimism. I'll try. I'm in heaven. I'm so happy I could cry. You are all over me, <laughs> snot dribbling from your nose. Haha. <laughs> -ha. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. 
When you first said no, everything went black. I wasn't sure what I would do anymore. I had lost all hope. I really, really do feel bad about that. But you had a change of heart. Now you're willing to have me. Yes. And everything I bring with me. That was the idea. Absolutely everything, right? You're pushing that point rather hard. I have a request. It's something I don't think I could ask you at any time, but now we're in the moment. I'll do anything, so long as it's within my ability. Tell me, what is it? Will you look at my naked body? What? That's right, because she had all the cuts and the scars that carved into her. More specifically, my scars. You are going to have to see them eventually. In which case, I'd like that to be now. A year ago, I had refused to look at her scars. I had been certain I wouldn't be able to accept what they represented. The abuse my father had subjected her to. If possible, I would have preferred never having to face that. But I, more than anyone, needed to know. It was my responsibility. I had to accept reality, not grimace or avert my eyes. I had to face up to what had been done to her. Okay. I couldn't bring myself to look at her as she hesitantly disrobed. The sound of her clothes rustling made me feel as though I was doing something incredibly improper. As much as I tried to feign calm, I was so tense my joints were practically creaking. My heart felt like it was being stepped on. I feel like I'm made of stone. I'm ready. You can turn around. Alright. I... I'll count to ten. Haha. <laughs> She's laughing at me. I feel a whole lot better seeing you so nervous. I'm turning around. Okay. Her head was tilted down, just enough to keep me from making out her expression. But she couldn't hide the pink flush spreading across her cheeks. It contrasted well against her white, but not excessively pale, skin as did her jet black hair. Sorry, it's not anything nicer to look at. In what way was this not a pleasant sight? I had never been more entranced by anything in my entire life. She was stunning. I had no measure of comparison. But I was certain the same sight of any other woman in the world would not have had the same effect on me. I could say as much with confidence, despite never having seen another woman nude. Hypnotized, I couldn't take my eyes off the gentle curves of her body. Were I more socially inclined, perhaps I could have told her she was pretty, which perhaps would have brought a sheepish, smi eh, sheepish smile to her face. And though I wanted to, my throat was dry as dust, and all I could manage to produce were incoherent rasps. Um, please, please say something. Ah. I'm, I'm hideous, aren't I? I'm unclean. I mean, I feel like it would... Be, it would have more of an effect if, like, you could actually, like, I don't see any scars on her, maybe they're lower, but I feel like that would kind of make it hit a little bit harder, you know? You're not hideous. You mean it? I mean it. Why would you think so? Because I... You're not unclean. Not in the slightest. You mean it? I do. Even seeing this? Giselle's eye slid downward, a trace of fear lurking just beneath the surface. I guess, yeah, I guess it's like they said, uh, it would make sense, right? Like, the, the scars and everything, they wouldn't be on the upper half of her body, because obviously he would want to keep them secret, so that's probably done on purpose. From the top, she looks normal, and then as you go downwards, that's where everything is. And there I saw her scars, swollen red and black gashes, still not healed after more than a year, defiled her white flesh. As she had described for me, the lines were arranged to form letters carved into her skin. So that's why she said I would have to see them eventually. My instincts told me these were wounds she would carry for the rest of her life. I felt nauseous, heartbroken, infuriated at the fact the person who had done this was out of my reach. The fact I could do nothing for her. What went through my father's mind when he looked at these? What did he gain from giving her these wounds? Why did he have to do this to her? Why my father, of all people? Giselle was the one with the scars. Giselle was the one in pain. 
but I felt like someone had shoved a handful of needles into my chest. Dozens of thick metal stakes piercing the walls of my heart, blood streaming through me like a river. If I didn't force myself to face it, I was liable to run. What was the right thing to say? What was I supposed to tell her? As hard as I thought, I couldn't come up with an answer. All I came up with was intense frustration. It killed me that I couldn't take these scars from her, that I couldn't give my father a piece of my mind. You are in no way hideous, no matter what marks are left on your body. It took all I had to form that single sentence. Thank goodness. I'm so glad to hear that. When I was down in that village, they said it didn't matter what they did to me because I was already dirty. That made me think I'd reached the point where I was so tainted, anyone could see it. I'm sorry. Why should you apologize? You were frowning really intensely. I thought I might have made you mad. No, I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at my father, the villagers, and myself. May I touch them? You may. My hands were trembling, but I knew I wouldn't be doing her any favors by hesitating. As soon as my fingertips brushed her skin, she shuddered. Does it hurt? No, there hasn't been pain in some time. I could feel her trembling where I touched her. It didn't seem like it was going to subside anytime soon. Soon she began whimpering softly. Her lips moved as though she was trying to say something, but the best she managed were a few strained gasps. Tears had begun welling up in her eyes as well. I'm... I feel like I'm in heaven right now, but I also kind of hate myself. Hate yourself, but why? Because I can't stop shaking. I'm overjoyed to feel your touch, but I can't control my body. I know you're nothing like that, but I keep seeing flashes of you doing other things in my mind. It kills me that my body won't react the way I feel in my heart. I was foolish to have ever thought these wounds might have healed. Just as scars remained on her body, so too did they remain in her heart. Unlike the physical wounds, though, the ones inside her seemed to still be raw and bleeding. She just did such a good job of acting normal that I had begun to think she might have gotten past them. Of course not, you blind fool. You shoved me back there because it brought back those memories. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm really, truly sorry. Why are you apologizing? I should be the one. Do you have any desire to place a curse on him? What? Do you want to curse Antonin? If you so desire, I might be able to make it happen. Cast a curse on him. Perhaps even a fatal one. I... Ignore the fact he's my father. I don't consider that man family anymore. I want you to be honest with me. If, hypothetically, such a thing were possible, would you want to curse him? No, I would not want that. Why not? You have every right to take revenge. For what that man did, he deserves punishment. He inflicted so much pain on you. You're still shaking more than a year later, and you could just let him get away with it out of the goodness of your heart? Hypothetically, if you wanted to curse him, I... I wouldn't do it, even hypothetically, and not out of the goodness of my heart. I'm just a coward. A coward? If curses were real, and he were to die by one, then I would never, ever be able to forget. If my resentment for him took his life, that would mean he had damaged me so permanently, I was never able to get past it. That's a very mature way of looking at it. I don't want that. I want to be able to forget. I'm still shaking now, but one day, I want to be able to proclaim, proudly, that it no longer has any control over me. But I appreciate the sentiment, setting aside your choice of method. You asked out of concern, and that's more than enough for me. A soft smile spread across her lips, but all it inspired in me was powerlessness. She was putting on an act. Was the sentiment really more than enough? Of course not. Not when she was still trembling so much. But what was I to do? What was I, unable to leave this house and helpless against the will of the Bullingers, to do? I was incapable of assuming... Oh boy, what's this word? Uh, assuaging her pain, wasn't I? I probably said that wrong, sorry. I couldn't do anything. Could I? Before I throw in the towel, I need to take some real time to think. 
stop running from the problem, to figure out a real way to give her what she wants. That doesn't involve curses and angry words. There has to be something only I can do. Giselle. I took the hand that had been tracing her scars and slid it around her waist. Even now, her trembling showed no signs of abating. I will never, the one thing I could do, hurt you again, was to wrap her trembling body in my arms. I want you here with me. All I ask of you now is to be by my side. You can be scared and you can quiver, but please don't apologize for it. Please don't feel bad about it. I promise not to turn my head away from your pain. So I ask of you, try not to keep it buried. I have no power or influence. I don't know all the right things to say. I am a man with nothing to his name. But the one thing I do have is a heartfelt desire to do whatever I can for you. As soon as, my, as, soon as I tightened my grip around her waist, she lurched forward, throwing her arms around me. Muffled whimpers resonated against my shoulder where she had buried her head. Eventually, they grew into unfettered sobs. And my bedchamber was enveloped in the sound of weeping. She cried like a little child. The usually strong-willed, cheerful, optimistic Giselle wailed from the depths of her soul. This past year, she had constantly been nudging me forward. It was always her leading the way. There had undoubtedly been moments where she'd wanted to cry like this, but couldn't. So starting now, I was going to try and support her too. I was sure I'd mess something up, so I had little experience being caring. I would probably anger her, probably stress her out, and probably make her cry. But I'd found my resolve. I'd overcome my hesitation. I was sure I could do it. That I could create a place where she could find peace. I could surely... Giselle didn't stop crying until the sun had begun peeking over the horizon. I had, as I said, not looked away, simply holding her in silence. She did decidedly not childlike frame, but she seemed incredibly small in my arms. We felt each other's warmth through my clothes. Between sniffles, Giselle said softly, One day, I'm certain, I'll be able to, without any hesitation, be properly joined with you. And it will be wonderful. Right now, I still can't control the shaking. But eventually, I want to be able to put my hands on you too. The affection infused in each and every word was palpable. Some time later, she drifted off to sleep, exhausted. I prayed from the bottom of my heart. But at least tonight, she would have pleasant dreams. All right. Well, that was beaut that was a beautiful episode. Uh it's everything I wanted it to be. Um they're finally it just it's amazing what happens when you just talk to each other and don't assume things and uh, let everything come out and it's just amazing like seeing from their internal uh points of view and how they interpreted situations but knowing from like the other person how wrong they were in their assumptions, but it's all out there. They've confessed their love. Uh, Michelle saw her for everything that she was, and we know that the happiness is not going to last long. I mean, we know, like, in present time, something happened to separate them, and they've been looking for each other for all of these years. Uh, but yeah, it's like, it's a matter of how that happens. Like, how did everything culminates to the present time with Michelle seemingly coming back as a spirit and Giselle being, uh, I guess, like, cursed to stay in the mansion for centuries, wandering, looking for Michelle. I want to get into that, but for now, like, that was a, a great episode. It's like, it's nice to see things moving along. So I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Until then. Special shoutouts to my top tier patrons Nana, Kaori Makoto, Revealing Storm, Tequila Mockingbird, Jared Fan, Izzy Ibo, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gaziff, Icognito, Locus Carolus, Mad Goldsmith, and Wu Sing Chrysalis.